Post Graduate Institute of Medical Education and Research is known for the best center for the nursing excellence and always strives to provide best care to the needy patients. First of all, I must congratulate you all, all the healthcare workers, including nursing officers, who are the part directly or indirectly of this monster war against COVID. The war is still going on. Over the last six months, since we set up this critical units, in, critical care units in isolated areas of COVID hospital, we noticed many times that we can do better care of these critically ill patients. These patients who are deprived of their near ones in view of the isolated environment in which they are being treated. Even you and all the healthcare workers are working in isolated environment. In view of this, the margin of error becomes minimum. There are few aspects of critical care which can be improved and I would like to highlight some of these. We need to have more positive attitude while taking care of these patients. We need to be more humanly. Basic hand hygiene practices become more important in these PP covered areas and we are still in the phase of infancy while setting up the standards of basic hand hygiene practices. We need to be more professional while handling intravenous access, arterial lines, monitoring cables and other catheters. Always ensure that the vitals which are being monitored should be documented and communicated properly. Overall patient care can be improved in terms of oral care, back care of these unconscious patients. Always ensure the teamwork. That's very important. While performing your duties in the isolated environment, please do not use sentences like, this is my work, or this is not my work, or this is your work. Instead, you must say, this is our work. Never hesitate to ask your seniors and juniors in case of any doubt. Any help can be provided as many high eyes are observing your work and ready for help or support in any kind, 24 hours every day. You should always give and take over at the bedside of the patients. You must include the must do things in your over. Always ask for timely administration of the medication where the suctioning was done, what is the status of oral care, back care, care of invasive lines and nutrition, etc. Ensure proper documentation of all the nursing care interventions which have been carried out by the people in the previous shift. Ensure proper documented and completed intake and output chart. And in case of any breach in activities, kindly inform the right authority so that the service doesn't suffer any longer. Spend some time with your patients for their general assessment. You will notice a lot of things that can be improvised for the well-being of the patients itself and the ICU staff. For example, you should always look for the position of the patient, whether the person is or the patient is properly positioned in the bed, whether the bedding is proper, improper, wrinkled beds, uh, whether the IV lines are entangled or they are clear, monitor the cable wires, cords and catheters, etc. Ensure that all the monitors are attached to the patients properly. Always have close eye on vital parameters of the patients. And very, very important thing is whenever you are doing any activity with the patients, though the patient is conscious or unconscious, always communicate and talk to the patients while performing any procedure. Try to talk to the patients by taking his or her name. Hygiene is one of the most simple and cost-effective methods to prevent the spread of infection. So ensure hand hygiene in each and every procedure. You should always change the third pair of gloves before and after touching the patient and patient area. Oral care. Oral care is highly important and it will help in prevention of many infections. To perform oral care in a COVID patient, we have to take a bowl, pour chlorhexidine solution in it, 
Take a sterile artery forceps and gauze. Hold the gauze with artery forceps, dip it in the solution and carefully do the oral care. When we talk about back care, back care we know has unique importance in bedridden patients in ICU. It will prevent bed sores, stimulate the circulation and also provide general comfort. We can take the help of the HA or the resident, ensure the IV lines and ventilator tubings are not pulled while doing this. Turn the patient to lateral position, inspect for any bed sore or ulcer, take sterilium in a sponge, clean the back thoroughly and apply the back rubbing lotion or talcum powder to reduce the friction. Begin from the neck and shoulders and then proceed over the entire back. Drains and catheter care. Drains should be properly labeled, mentioning the name, date and timing of drains or the catheters inserted. The duration of the catheterization is the dominant risk factor for catheter associated infections. As per scientific literature, every fourth to fifth ICU patients with indwelling catheter will develop catheter associated infections and of these around 4% will develop severe infections including septicemia. We have to check the dressings if soiled change the dressings, check the insertion site if it is inflamed inform the resident and get the needful done. How to perform closed suctioning perfectly? This COVID patient is intubated and needs closed suctioning as well as we usually do it in severe ARDS patients. We are not going to disconnect the circuit and any tubing during suctioning. We will aspirate the Riles tube first, will increase the FiO2 to 100%. We will do the neutral head position during suctioning. If the patient is conscious, then we will have to inform the procedure to him. And if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, then we have to inform to the floor resident prior to suctioning. During suctioning, we have to monitor the vitals also. Ensure proper hand hygiene before beginning of suctioning. Attach the suction tubing. Take saline in 10 cc syringe. Attach the syringe to the flushing line and do suctioning. After suctioning is over, ensure suction catheter is fully withdrawn. It should not obstruct the endotracheal tube or the tracheostomy tube. Flush the suction with saline and keep the closed suction wrapped in a sterile gauze. First of all, you need to develop aseptic field for the drug preparation. For this, you need to go to the designated area. Wash your hands with alcohol-based sanitizer. Use a sterile sheet over the trolley. Then collect the plastic tray and clean it with spirit swab. Allow some time to dry. Now this tray is your aseptic field. Collect the items which you need for the procedure and place them next to your aseptic tray. For preparation of drugs, you need to sterilize your hands again with alcohol-based sanitizer. Peel open the packaging of the syringes and the needle. Assemble the needle and syringes ensuring that the key parts are not contaminated. Now put another pair of sterile gloves. Place the assembled syringes and needles in the aseptic tray. Remove any dust caps from the vials, if any, and clean them with spirit swab. Allow them to dry by the side of the aseptic tray and now draw the drug and dilute accordingly. 
For administration of the drugs, first explain to your patient about the drug injection. Then observe the insertion site and the exit site for any signs of infection, phlebitis, etc. and then take appropriate actions for it. Then decontaminate your hands again. Clean the injection ports with 2% chlorhexidine wipes and then allow them to dry. It will take around 30 seconds to completely dry. Administer the drug with saline flush and post administration dispose the waste products in the designated bins. Just like in other ICUs, even in COVID ICUs, we use drugs like antibiotics, ionotropes, vasopressors, sedatives, opioids and muscle relaxants. You should prepare all the drugs very very carefully because many drug vials might look similar. Always label the drugs and vascular lines properly. For the antibiotics, you have to check the date of expiry, its dosage, the medium of dilution and the duration of infusion. Test dose of the antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporins which might cause allergy to the patient have always should be given. For starting ionotropes, use dedicated IV cannulas, preferably using a single port of the central venous catheter or the wide board peripheral cannulas like 16 or 18 gauge. Don't flush the IV lines that contain ionotropes. For example, if noradrenaline is running in the yellow port of a central line and you have to administer a muscle relaxant, use the blue port or the white port. Do not use the yellow port, otherwise noradrenaline might get flushed which can lead to undesired sympathetic surge. Don't connect the ionotropes in the same line in which the IV fluids or drugs are being administered. For example, if maintenance IV fluids are being administered in the white port and you need to connect an ionotrope or a vasopressor, use the yellow port or the blue port. Always start with using high pressure tubings and remove the air from these tubings before starting any infusion. If the ionotropes are started in high pressure tubing in which air is left, it will create dead space which can introduce further air into the blood system and may delay the effect of ionotropes. Don't give boluses of drugs like sodium bicarbonate, calcium and antibiotics. Give these drugs as slow infusions. Do not reuse the syringes that were used for preparing any other drugs like ionotropes or muscle relaxants. The residual effect of these drugs may manifest. For example, a syringe which was used for loading adrenaline, if used again to administer any other drug, it can cause unexplained tachycardias, fatal arrhythmias or even cardiac arrest in these patients. Do not mix Ringer lactate with blood as calcium in Ringer lactate can chelate citrate anticoagulant in blood. Do not mix thiopentone with blood as low pH of the blood may precipitate thiopentone crystals. Do not administer thiopentone in intra-arterial line as it can cause intense pain and vasospasm in the line. Do not mix phenytoin with Ringer lactate and do not mix calcium with bicarbonate solution. Care for the vascular lines including central line and arterial lines. For central lines, inspect the lines thoroughly. Ensure that the central lines are not getting kinked by any chance. Keep the central line wrapped in a sterile gauze. Check the date of insertion of the central line whether it is mentioned or not. Check the tegaderm daily. If it is soiled, then change it or ask the technician in charge to change it. Check for the date of three-way connectors. It should be changed every 48 hours. Ensure that there is no blood in these three-way connectors. If present, please change it. For arterial line and transducers. Arterial line and transducers system are being used for beat-to-beat -beat blood pressure monitoring. The most common sites being the radial artery. 
never give any fluid or drug in the arterial line. Ensure that the ports are clean and the dressing is not soiled. Do not push air into the arterial system or the entire transducer system and inspect for any blood clots in the entire system. If present, discard the line. Needle-free connectors, also called as clave connectors, are specially designed to decrease catheter-related bloodstream infections. They can be used preferably for administration of IV drugs and infusions of antibiotics. They can be double or triple lined. Always use lower lock syringes while handling these clave connectors. Attach them properly and aspirate blood in a vertical direction so that air is left behind before administration. Do not administer air or do not push air into the clave connectors. And avoid needle insertion through these connectors. Make your working environment neat, tidy and clean. Know your own importance and the role in every act, task for betterment and speedy recovery of the COVID patient. Appreciate yourself, very very important and believe that you alone can make a difference. You have all made us very proud with your sincere determination and serious efforts. With the same spirit and zeal, you shall always make us proud.